S3 scope down policies are a powerful new way to control your user's access to the data you have in S3. It allows you to enable self-service analytics on top of your S3 data lake while being able to maintain the access controls to ensure that users are only able to see data from the buckets that you've allowed them to. All their permissions are still managed in IAM and now they're easily integrated into QuickSight. So common use case here is I've got many different departments that contain or have data stored in my S3 data lake. For instance, I have finance, I have marketing, I have uh, sales and DevOps, and each of them should only be able to access their own data from their own given bucket when they go to create reports through QuickSight. So this integration uh, enables that granularity uh, to control what either at what bucket level people have access to or even down to the individual resources within a bucket. So let's now jump into QuickSight and see how this is implemented. So right now I am logged into a QuickSight account as an admin user. And I have a couple different S3 buckets here, one for HR and one for marketing. And in this simple example, I have, I have some CSV files contained in each one of them. And I want to ensure that when someone from marketing logs in, they're only able to access data from one bucket and someone from HR can only access data from the other bucket. So I have also already configured some uh, IAM policies here. And we can see, so this is, uh, I just used the kind of wizard editor to, or guide to create a read-only permission to a given bucket. So this is all the permissions that came along with that read-only permission. And then here I'm saying uh, that they get access to anything within that bucket and to the bucket itself. So here is where you're controlling exactly what buckets and what resources this policy grants access to. So I've got one of these for HR, I've got a similar one for marketing. So likely you already have these IAM policies already set up if you've uh, started implementing your S3 data lake and we'll just reuse those same policies that you already have. In this example, I'm showing you kind of a, a brand new policy just for demo purposes. All right, so now how do I go apply those policies within QuickSight? So here under the Manage QuickSight menu, uh, you, you'd be able to see this as an admin user. And if I browse over to here, security and permissions. Uh, first thing you'll notice is this page looks a little bit different than it did before. So there's a few different sections here. Uh, the first is where I can add and remove permissions uh, for QuickSight to connect to entire services kind of at a macro level. So do I want to enable connectivity to Redshift or to RDS or to S3, Athena, et cetera? kind of on a macro level for the whole account. This is kind of the, the highest level. So here I have uh, access to S3 and Athena turned on. If you click on details, you can choose exactly which buckets you want QuickSight to have access to. Now think of this as the superset of all the buckets that everybody in your account should have access to. So first QuickSight needs to be able to access this bucket, then the scope down policies is a kind of a, a, a lower level of granularity where I'm saying uh, when this user logs in, they may only be able to see one of these buckets. But if I want some user to access it, I have to at least enable it here first. So here I've just set it up so that they can access all the buckets. You can also access buckets across different accounts even. So it doesn't even need to be in the same AWS account. So there's ways you can do that. Uh, but this is uh, a little bit different interface to configure that, but these were kind of existing features that, that we had in QuickSight before the scope down part. So uh, just a new, new UI for enabling the uh, service access. This second section is new, so this is changing what the default behavior would be. So I'm, in the first step I was saying, these are buckets that QuickSight has access to in general. Now I'm saying, what should the default be for when a, a user tries to go to connect to something? Do I want to 
allow them access to everything in there? So basically whitelist them for everything that I gave QuickSight access for? Or the opposite, do I want to deny access by default and then just enable things through the scope down policies? So I believe it'll be more common uh, to restrict it and using the deny as the default and then using the scope down to enable access to certain buckets. But no problem doing the other way where your default is people can see them all and then you use scope down to specifically deny access. That works fine too. So I'm gonna leave this on deny. And now the last section here is where I actually go assign the scope down policies. So here I see that I have already set up one for the marketing data bucket and the marketing data policy. And I've assigned this to my user called Tom. So Tom is now able to access that marketing data bucket, but nobody else is. Because if you remember, my, my default is to deny access. So let's go walk through how to create a new assignment. So the first thing is give it a name. So this one is going to be for HR. Oops. Now I'm going to browse to the policy and this is pulling from IAM right now. So these are the pre-existing policies that I have in IAM. And I'll find my HR data policy. And now I'm choosing who do I want to assign this to. So I could assign it to everybody or to just certain groups of users. Um, so the groups would either be groups that I, if I'm using Active Directory, I can use those AD groups here. Or if I've used the API and QuickSight to provision groups, uh, I can use those. Uh, I'm just going to assign it to a single user here. Sorry, I'm gonna, here, here's uh, the user I want to do, which is uh, Sarah. Um, so I'm just going to choose this one user, but you can add as many as you'd like here. And this is kind of just summarizing the changes that I'm making here. And I'm going to say save and enable. All right, so now I've got two sets of policies set up here. So let's how, see how these work in action. So we're going to go log into that same account as Sarah right now. And we are going to choose to connect to S3. So the way to connect to data in S3, if you're not using Athena, which is another common way to do it, and the scope down policies will uh, be enforced even when using Athena or Redshift Spectrum and others, you know, anything that accesses S3 is going to honor these. Uh, but here I'm going to say that I want to go upload a manifest file. And this manifest file is basically just pointing to that HR bucket. And I'll say connect. Now, if all goes well, I haven't received an error saying that I was denied access. And I, can, uh, I am now granted access to be able to ac uh, connect to data within that HR bucket. So this is great. My, my scope down policy is working. So let's try the exact same thing, but we're going to try and go connect to the marketing bucket this time. And if you remember from my assignments before, I've allowed Tom access to connect to marketing, but not Sarah. Sarah can only connect to HR. So we're going to try the same thing, but use my marketing manifest file this time. And here it's essentially just giving me an error saying that I don't have the uh, correct permissions to be able to access that bucket. So this confirms that the scope down policies are working. So in summary, you can use QuickSight to open up self-service access to your entire S3 data lake while still being able to have the peace of mind that people are not able to connect to uh, buckets and files that you don't want to give them access to. So if you have some PII data 
in some of your finance data sets and there's a subset of users that should be able to access them but not everyone else, this is a perfect way to be able to restrict that access. Thank you and hope that you enjoy the new S3 scope down policies feature.